we'll keep it moving because we were just talking one rookie wide receiver with Zay Flowers. Now let's go and talk Quentin Johnson and this very talented wide receiver room for the Los Angeles Chargers. Callum Moore coming into town. We're expecting the pace play to go up. Competitive division, Justin Herbert MVP season being called by many. Um, how do you feel about this room? And does anyone here feel overpriced, underpriced? Obviously, we got Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Uh, how are you feeling about the Chargers offense this year, Tim? Honestly, I feel like Keenan and Mike, Mike Williams are kind of underpriced, but I've in, in different discussions that we've had, I'm not foregoing Keenan to draft Mike Williams, but if I don't have the opportunity to draft Keenan, I don't hate going after Mike Williams if the table is set properly, meaning Mike Williams is ADP 61 currently per fantasy data. So people around him are Drake London, Jerry Judy, Delvin Cook, Kyle Pitts, James Conner, De- uh, Dallas Goddard, Elvin Kamara, Tyler Lockett, and Rashad White. That's the next 10. So there are other players that you could work to pivot to if you wanted to, but I don't feel in any in basically any situation that Mike Williams is inadequately priced based on that ADP. But I much would much prefer Keenan. Keenan has just been basically automatic like the last what like four or five seasons. And so I feel really comfortable that that way. I think that the passing volumes go up as well. And I think QJ's um also adequately ranked at one at 115 ADP as well. So I think that you're you're no matter what, you're probably getting a Chargers wide receiver at a good cost. It's just then we're gonna have to determine who gets the volume and the quantity because currently QJ is wide receiver four on the depth chart behind Palmer, which I don't know if that's gonna stay very long to be that way. But you know, it, there could be things that QJ really doesn't have polished yet, or the the coaching staff doesn't have faith in putting him out there in certain situations, and that could really impact his his fantasy impact. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think Palmer, this team, at the time, I felt like they overdrafted him where they took him, but he's come out. He's not been the most efficient player. He has been the most impressive, but he has played a lot, and they do feel pretty comfortable, and they like him there uh, in Los Angeles. They're they're posting out the guy. He will be involved, right? Whether it's mm-hmm. the third or the fourth option, I'm not going to act like Palmer doesn't exist. I'm not interested in him for fantasy, but I do have Quentin Johnson projected as the three, and I'm super bullish in this offense. Even Quentin Johnson is the third option. I still have him getting 75 targets, and as a deep threat, that could equate to very easily six to 800 yards, depending on exactly how he's used. And and there's excitement there because Mike Williams' track record with injuries isn't the best. We all know this. It's no secret. Keenan Allen, you know, had soft tissue issues last year, kind of the first time in his career, and hitting 30, that could concern a lot of people. So I do see the, a world where one or both those guys do what happened last year, and it's it becomes a more open room. And Quentin Johnson, if he steps in, that could be huge. So for Quentin Johnson, it's not necessarily just about the raw projection, even though I do kind of like for a rookie how his projections came out. It's not a fantasy impact player unless some things happen above him. But I think that the high ceiling potentials really is there with Quentin Johnson in this offense. And so even though the projection might not be there, that's where I think we're not necessarily drafting off projections, right? When I go in and I submit for accuracy, I'm probably going to have Quentin Johnson a little bit lower. But when I'm in my own drafts and I'm attacking the board, I think there's a very little chance that I take a player like an Alan Lazard or something before I take Quentin Johnson. I saw that a lot last year with the Andrews. They were taking Alan Lazard. They were taking Alan Lazard before they were taking um, – players like Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave just because of the projected volume in Green Bay as the wide receiver one. And I don't want people to make that mistake again this year. I think Alan Lazard is a fine player. I think there's going to be his finish could be a wide receiver three or a wide receiver four, which starts in a lot of your leagues. But a Quentin Johnson could legitimately end up winning a league, being a guy who's a set and forget if things fall right. If not, I don't think it's the end of the world because you're taking the guy in the 90s. You're taking him very far down the way in your draft. So I think it's much, uh, very much worth the risk. But and the like, the cost to uh, to trade for Alan Lazard is always going to be way cheaper than it would be to trade for QJ, even if they were the same ADP a week after the draft because of the type true. of player they are and the upside that they have, where you can always trade for that, that level of production that Alan Lazard gives you, but you cannot trade for the ceiling that QJ gives you. And likewise, a guy you can project the volume if he's healthy. I think Mike Williams is extremely underrated in drafts. There's every year you look at the FFPC, like NFC, like these high stake leagues. You look at the ADP, even on underdog to an extent. Mike Williams is always 5, 10, 15 wide receivers above where he is on Yahoo, ESPN, 
sleeper. And I think it's just because we have this mentality of Mike Williams as well. It's a guy who always gets hurt. Um, we don't really know what the usage is. It's kind of boom bust. And he really isn't a boom bust guy. Like when Thank he you. gets the vault, when he gets the volume, he can, he can either get it on a big play or, you know, he's peppered through with the volume. He can always get it. He's always got a touchdown. He's had a thousand yard seasons before he's had double digit touchdown seasons and he's had both at the same time. I think Mike Williams, especially if this offense gets even faster, if he is healthy, he could be a wide receiver too with big spike weeks. And right now you can get him as your wide receiver three in a lot of leagues and put him in your flex or as your wide receiver three. I love that for a ceiling. So I'm, I'm, I'm there with you on Keenan. I do like Keenan. I've taken a good bit of Keenan. I think he's a very, very safe, especially in PPR pick, especially with the, with this offense. I like the way he finished last season. I like Keenan Allen. I have him as a, a top 16 wide receiver for this upcoming season. But if I don't end up with Keenan because maybe I'm on a turn, which just doesn't work that way, I'm putting a circle around Mike Williams. I love where he's going in drafts. I think he's a really exciting pick. We always talk about when you hit kind of that range where you can gr- kind of grab that third wide receiver. We love these guys who who can give you those those big, big weeks. And again, I'm not saying it's a boom or bust with Mike Williams. I think he offer, has more form than that, but that ceiling is still there. And that's what I like with, I don't love Christian Watson, but like if he falls into the wide receiver three territory in drafts, I'm all about it. I think it's a fine ceiling pick. I think that if the volume's right with this team, the four might not be as bad as, as we think. And then the spike weeks are going to be fantastic. You know what I mean? That was the argument for Gabe Davis last year when he was going at wide receiver 20, hated it. Well, I don't, what are we doing here? He's in the top 20 at points last year. He was going wide receiver 15. I, I think that's absurd. But when people were getting him as the fourth guy in their team, I'm like, hey, it's worth it. Like he could have some big weeks when you put him in your lineup. Now, I don't necessarily love Gabe Davis. I think he's fine. His cost this year. I'm not like propping him up. I'm just using examples of player. We like these guys who can go get a big play as later options. I don't love them as my wide receiver one or wide receiver two. But when they could be the third or fourth guy in my lineup, I love it. And I think Mike Williams offers more than just that boom. And that's why I really, really like him where he's going. So that's kind of my guy uh, with the charges here. If I had to, based on just cost, it's Keenan over Mike, but based on what you can get from their cost, I really like Mike Williams. We, we sit basically on the same, same plateau here, but I wanted to ask you a question because you did the research. What is the bust rate or what is the number of games mm-hmm. on average that top wide receivers busts? Because I want to dispel the rumor I, I didn't know I was this big of a fan of Mike Williams until I really did a lot of the research this off season where like, I don't really like him for dynasty. Cause I just think his price is really weird. Like it's just, it's weird, but um, I'm pulling up his uh, game log of last year. Yeah. I, I can just he... answer your, I can just answer your question. Right. So for 2022, there was only five wide receivers who busted less than 25% of the time. So I think people have this mentality in their head that, well, the top wide receivers don't miss games. Like Devontae Adams last year was so boom busty. Devon Devontae Adams busted 31% of the time last year, and that was top 10 at the wide receiver position. And by bust, I'm talking guys who finished outside the top 36 on a points per game basis for that week. So last year in half PPR, that line for me was 9.7. So if you scored under 9.7, I said you busted for the week over 9.7. I say that you succeeded that week. You were a worthwhile uh, start for your team. So with with Mike Williams, he busted 45% of the time. That's fine. And in a points per game basis, when you take out, I, I call it my adjust points per game because I take out where you play less than 25% of the snaps because I don't think that truly tells a story. Mike Williams, he did have a game where he went out early with an injury. We removed that from the sample size. It's still healthy enough. It's not like, oh, well, you yeah, can't say two. that, but you can't project that. He did have two. I'm just saying I at least took out those games. Yeah. He finished as the wide receiver 15 in points per game and only busted 45% of the time. Now, you might say that's every other game. But that's that's what you get with the wide receiver position. I mean, that's that there's only like 20 guys, 20, 20, 20, 20 to 24 guys who busted less than that. So, I mean, that's still a top 24 metric. So, yeah, he is in the boom bust, as you think. He had two games where he played. He played 37 percent and nine percent. So if you take if you just remove those due to injury, I understand that we're not actually be able to do that just for the course of this discussion. He only had three other games in which he scored under 10. One of them was 8.7 and the other two were three. So in my mind, it's really only, I understand that we probably played him and he got hurt. That, that's a completely different case. But in the games he actually completed, I only see only two games. He really didn't put up points where yeah, eight's not great, but you could do a lot worse than eight when the other games he's giving you 20. Completely agree. 